weeks ago. Um, we want to thank Maury Eliyahu for the last um, four weeks of his lesson that he did on uh, restitution, making sure that everybody understands that right now we're in the state of, of mercy, where the Father is showing his kindness and his love towards us, and understanding this, uh, the offering is going to be very important to give us a better understanding of Torah. So what we're going to do is, is, is kind of pick up from there. All right, um, again, 1 Kings part 5 is where we're at. And uh, before we do anything, we want to give all the state to the Father of Yehud. Again, giving all the state to the Father of Yehud, the creator of heaven and earth and all things. Without him, the Father of Yehud, we can do nothing. So we thank the Father for the manifestation of his Torah. And his Torah was Yahusha HaMashiach, the atoning sacrifice of the nation of Yasharal. Before we get started also, um, I want to make sure that everybody understands that the classes are for edification, bringing us into a closer relationship with the Father. They're not personal but we must make sure that the Father's word goes out. So Mr. Picard, we talked about a couple of things. We talked about all the state being given to the Father. It was the Father who created the heavens and the earth, and without him we could do nothing. And we'd like to thank the Father for the manifestation of his Torah, Yahusha HaMashiach, who was an atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yashara. The first scripture that I want to go to is the book of uh, Bereshit, or the book of Genesis. And what we're going to do is uh, make sure that we're understanding scriptures from a Hebraic perspective. Because that's going to be key to our relationship with the Father. It has, um, in the English, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew, it has Bereshit, Bara, Elohim, Et, Ha, Shemayim, the U, the Tav, Ha, Aretz. Now, making sure that we give all the state to the Father. As we know, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet is the um, is, is the Bet. It's this letter here. It's the Bet. We've gone over that a few times. And they have this letter enlarged, letting us know that this represents a house. And like we have talked about so many times before, we know that the bet is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and actually the aleph is the first letter of the alphabet. Let us know now is that the ox, the aleph now represents an ox or a strong leader. And the strong leader controls the house. And when you put these two letters together, you have the Hebrew word Ab. And it means Father. So first and foremost, like we always do, we must give all this thing to the Father because the Father controls the house. Are there any questions so far? The Father controls the house. So that's the reason why we say in the beginning of all of the shows that we do is that all the steam. Everything, all the steam goes to the Father. And then we have the word um, Reshit, which means the beginning. The Father is the Reshit. He is the beginning. He is the head. So that's what the word Reshit means. The word, the actual word beginning in Hebrew is Reshit, and it means the head, the first, and the beginning, which is the Father. And the Father created the house. And that house now is actually, if you wanted to be uh, specific, that house is actually the house of Yahshua all. We have the word um, bara, which means created or create. Elohim, Aleph Tav. So we have this symbol next. We have the Aleph and the Tav. Or you might see it this way, the olive in the, the top. From a Hebraic perspective, that first olive top is representing the Mashiach. As it has, uh, as we begin in the English, it has, in the beginning, Elohim created 
uh, the heavens and the earth. When we, again, when we read this in Hebrew, it was the Father now, who is the head, who is the beginning, he created Elohim Aleph So we know that that word, let me just erase some of this here. We know that the word Elohim is plural, but can also act as singular. Okay, so context is going to be everything. So it was the Father who created the, uh, the Elohim, but there was a specific Elohim that we're talking about here, and this particular Elohim was Yahusha. This is the Aleph Tav. So in the beginning, the Father created um, a strong leader, and this strong leader now was going to have a mark or a sign. That's what the uh, the tha or the top represents. It represents a sign or a signal. And what we find interesting now is that the next word is um, ha or in, and we see this letter here. Let's erase some of this again. So the Father is the creator of all things. 
and he created a messenger, and that messenger was Yahusha HaMashiach. He is that ultimate, that ultimate uh, messenger. All right, so I'm just trying to help us to get a better understanding of what's going on here. And then we had talked about the olive top. Again, this olive top symbols will be very important because the olive top represents the strong leader, and this is the mark of the the mark of the sign. And then we have, like you talked about earlier, the word Shamayim, once again, Shamayim, actually, Shamayim. The Mashiach is going to make his first sign or signal inside of the heavens. And so that's when we go to um, Tehillim 9416, verse 1, let's read down to like 6. O Yahuwah Elohim, to whom vengeance belong. Mm -hmm. O Elohim, to whom vengeance belong. Show thyself. Lift up thyself. Thy judges of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Let me show that's the one. Is that the one? That's 19? 94. Oh, I said, I said 94? Yeah. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, my, uh, 19. Yes, 19, excuse me. Yes, Psalms 19. 19. Yeah, excuse me. 19 and 1? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Psalms 19, verse 1. The heaven declares the glory of Elohim, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Right, and the firmament, the, the Shamayims, again, this word right here, Shamayims, they declare, the word, that word declare, it means to, to show. So if somebody's going to declare something, they need to um, show a sign or a signal. And that's what the olive top does. The strong leader is going to show a sign, the mark. And everybody know what the mark is that the messenger is going to send. The sign or it, the symbol that he's going to show now is the covenant. That is always the mark of the sun. We know that's in the word for covenant in Hebrew is the word Greeks. And we know this is now the shedding of blood. D D, excuse me, D D I N G of blood. Because a couple of years ago we had four um, blood moons. We had two um, Pesachs back to back, and we had two at the Feast of Sukkot back to back. Just read on. Day of day until day of the speech, and night until night shows knowledge. One more thing, um, can we do one again? One more time. The Shamayim declares the glory of Elohim. Right, and the glory of Elohim is the Mashiach. That's the esteem, that's the glory of the Father is Mashiach. Okay, so the heavens, the heavens are going to declare the Mashiach of Elohim, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Read on. Day unto day of the speech, mm -hmm. and night unto night show knowledge. Right. There is no speech, no language, where their voices are not heard. Right. The line is gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In them have he sent a tabernacle for the sun. Right, so we want to stop right there. So when we go back to Genesis, the first chapter, because what we're trying to show is that the Father is the creator of all things. And the Father is going to send a messenger. And the ultimate messenger is the Mashiach, right? Yahusha. And the first sign that we're going to be able to see of the Mashiach is going to be in the heavens, the Shamayim. And then we have in Hebrew, I read it again um, in Hebrew, we have Bereshit. Bara Elohim et ha shamayim u the alatab ha arex. So the next word that we want to um, look at is the word arex or arex, arax. And this just means earth. So watch how this 
goes now. The first sign or signal was shown where? Shamayim. Right. Shamayim. And then after that, we see now the manifestation of that on earth. Excuse me. Uh, Shamayim is heaven. Excuse me. It's heaven. Now, to further prove this, because we want to make sure that everybody understands is that we recognize and we worship the Father, but the Mashiach is the mediator. He is the glory or the esteem of the Father. The Father is the master gene, and he sends out a messenger gene to act on his behalf. Nothing can exist outside of the Father. Absolutely nothing at all. Now, to prove this, we're going to go to the book of John. Book of John. And all of this is preluding now to uh, the topic, 1 Kings part 5. But we want to make sure that everybody understands, or understands, the importance of the Father and the redemptive role of Mashiach. Okay, I'm going to be asking uh, a few questions, so I pray that everybody has their, um, their, their thinking cap on. It says, um, in the beginning, as it was in Genesis, the first chapter, as in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. This is the way that they have it. The question is, John 1. Uh, yes, John 1 and 1. We have, in the beginning, is... It has the word was there. Was is what tense? Past tense. Moray had brought out. The way we look at things from a Hebraic perspective, whatever is in front of you is right. Whatever is in front of you is the past, and what's behind you is towards the future. Right, it's the future. Oh, got you. I'll be young. So in the beginning was and is is very important. So in the beginning was and is the word. And the word was and still is with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. In the beginning is and was the word, the logos. What was first in the beginning? What was first in the beginning? So in the beginning was in the beginning was in the beginning was was the father. Yeah, he's the head. He's the beginning of all things. So in the beginning was the father, and the word was with Elohim. So who would be this word? What is the word? We have the beginning. Right. The beginning was the father. And the word was Torah. The word Torah means instructions. And this is the manifestation of Yahusha. And the reason why we know that these are actually two parties is because of what word? I just want to make sure that we look at this real, real close. With, absolutely. With. So that word with is plural. Now, being that the word with is plural, looking at it from a Hebraic perspective, we know that the word is plural, but as long as these two parties are in harmony, we know that this word, this word with is plural, but it can also mean singular. It can be singular, and the word for singular from a Hebraic perspective, would be a God. They're one. So the Father and the Son are one. We 
told, right? Everybody's good. Hallelujah. So in the beginning was the Word. So in the beginning was the Father. It also was the Word, and the Word was with. It has the word, um, when you erase it, everybody's good? Yeah. Okay. Somebody said no? Oh, okay. We want to, we want to dissect a, a whole lot of stuff today, uh, Mr. Picard, because what I should have done, I started off in 1 Kings, but what I should have done is actually going to uh, 1 Samuel, but I just want to make sure that we have a good understanding on, um, on how to read the scriptures. That's going to be very important, how to read the scriptures. Because a lot of times, um, I'm sure we all do this. You might ask a person, well, what does that mean? And the only thing that they're able to do now is just recite the story. I don't need for you to, to, for, to recite the story to me. That's not what I'm asking. When you read the scriptures, I need to know what does it mean. And when you tell me what, it, what does that scripture mean, how is that scripture now being applied to your life? That's what makes the difference. You don't have to recite it again. I already read it. So I need to know what does it actually mean. Uh, it says, now he was in the beginning with Elohim. Uh, who is the he? Verse 2 said, he was in the beginning with Elohim. The he is... Let me do this. The word they have is G-O-D. We all do it here. God. Um, and when we look up that word God, from a Hebrew perspective, we know that that is translated to um, Elohim, right? Elohim. That's, that's not the best way to look at that. This is actually, it should be the Father Yahuwah. So maybe this will help out and this will give us a better understanding on how to look at verse 2. He was in the beginning with the have God here. Or so, um, if you read it in the Greek Septuagint, it would have the word um, A L O H A, Aloha. You have that in yours? Um, is that okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so, when I, when I ask the question now, he was in the beginning with Elohim. Who is the he in chapter, verse 1, chapter 2? Because remember, there was no um, commas, parentheses, Words in italics, capital letters, like that at all in Hebrew. So when it says, he was in the beginning, who was it that was in the beginning? The sun, right? You have the sun? I'm not trying to confuse anybody, but again, I just want everybody to look at it from the Hebraic perspective. He was in the beginning. The he will actually be the father again, Yahuwah. He, he's, at the, he's the beginning. He's the first and foremost of all things. So he was in the beginning, and then it was somebody with the Father in the beginning. So this God person here, or, or entity here now, would be the Mashiach. What I'm trying to do here, yeah, excuse me, is, is make sure that we put everything in this proper perspective. Because our word beginning means Reshi. And we know that the Father actually has no beginning and no end. And we know that Genesis, the first chapter, is a, a retelling or, um, of, it's not the beginning, the beginning. It's talking about a beginning. So he, we have to identify the pronoun he, was in the beginning, and this person now was with Elohim. And then it says, now everything was by his hand. So when it says everything was by his hand, the question is, who is, again, the he? Everything was made by his hand. Who do we have in verse thing? Who created, who, who, everything was created by who? This is the question. Yeah, I'll show. Yeah, right, okay. Um, this is what I'm trying to do, <laughs> okay? 
I'm, I'm trying to very think this proper Hebraic perspective. The father of Yahuwah created everything. Every single thing. Watch this. Everything was by his hand. I'm trying to read between the lines because we have four levels of understanding the scriptures. We have the Peshat level, the Ramaz level, the Drash, and the Sa'ad level. And this is like the, um, like the mystery level. This is like the plain level, which is fine. Begin to look at some of the other clues. Begin to look at or uh, hints. We begin to look. This we start to dig a little bit deeper. Um, dig, I put a little deeper into the scripture. Uh, in so many ways, except, uh, you saying so, the father was the master designer and the son was the creator, uh, the birth vice versa. We're going to go to this. Not even the Mashiach can exist outside of the Father. Every single thing is coming from the Father. And the reason why I'm looking at it from this perspective, we're trying to do it this way, because a lot of times we say, before we do the classes, all things were created by the Father. If we go to the book of Colossians, we do see where the Mashiach now, and we're going to go to that a little bit later, because that's not even a proper translation when it's talking about the Mashiach created all things. It's actually the Father that created all things. The Mashiach is acting on behalf of the Father. All, let me see, this, this word right here, I'll do it this way. This word right here is very important in Hebrew. It's the Hebrew word, um, it means all or everything. So, when I say all esteem is due to the Father, I mean all esteem is due to the Father. The Mashiach could not exist without the Father. The Mashiach said himself, I come not to teach or say the things of concerning me, but I speak all things concerning the Father. The words that I speak are the words of my Father. The Father now, he is the Av, the Aleph, in the Bet, or we might see it in the, uh, the Aramaic. We see it this way. He is the Father. He is the Av. He controls this house, this Bet. He it's the father that goes into the house. He controls the house. So everything with inside of it belongs to him. Everything. All of it. So, if you keep that in mind, watch how things begin to... Um, let's see here. You're going back to... John. So John 3 again. Everything was by the Father's hands. And without the Father was not anything whatever that existed. Again, everything was by the Father's hand, acting through the Father, acting, acting through the Son now, and without the Father was not anything ever, whatever that existed. In him was life. In him is who? Who is the him? In him is life. Oops. We have in verse 4, in him was life. Who is the him? Right, in him we have, yeah, we have the Mashiach, right? right? No problem. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have all the patience in the world. In him was life. Nothing can exist outside of the Father. Okay? The Father gives all light. He's the grand creator of everything. The Father is the light. He is. Life is. 
okay. All right, now it is. <laughs> you can't miss that now. Um, how are you spelling it? C H A? C H A. C H A. Okay. Kai. Okay. So, no, it's actually K H L. K H L. Uh oh, K H? Right. Oh, okay. A I? Yeah. Okay, Kai. You're spelling um, the name. Kent. You spell, you, you spell it with a, 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 a cop? Kent, yeah, with a cat. Kent and the O. Oh, okay. We, we, no problem. Uh, and, him, and the father was life. And the life was the light of man. Who is or what is the light of man? In him is who you who was who is the life of man? There we go. Hallelujah. Yahusha. So begin. We have in him. The him is now the uh, the father. In him was life, and the life this light now was the light of man. Verse five. And this light shined in darkness. Now this light now we say is the Mashiach. The question now that I have, who or what is the darkness? Very good, very good, very good. Um, let's go to the book of Yeshayahu 9 and 2. We need to find out who or what is this darkness. We get um, our executive Moray. If you can lend me a hand here, we could go to the book of Yeshayahu nine and two. And what are we looking for? Stop. We want to identify who or what is this darkness. Okay, because this light now was the light of man, and this light shone in the darkness. So nine and two. Yeshayahu. Uh, Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah, excuse me, 9 and 2, excuse me. 9, nine and, two. and 2. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Whoa. So now, the people that saw, that, uh, say it again? Walk that in walked in darkness, who are those people? Not you, Warren. Right. I want some sisters here. Because, uh, <laughs> because, I gotta hear my name at the same time here. <laughs> okay, this is not about the other word here. So again, um, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Who is these people? Because the Hebrew word for people, I'll just give you a clue, is the word um, um, and it means nation. So the people that saw the um, that walk in darkness is and they saw a great light, which is right. So we see now that everything is now beginning to fall in line with um, John the first chapter verse one. We have the Father being the life. The light is actually the Mashiach. The people that sat in darkness is the nation of Yashirov. Okay? Real easy. This would be easier with just the pictorial. <laughs> just the Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, once we once we do our thing, we're gonna actually get a a projector and a projector screen and uh, we can do it that way so that um, it can be like you said a whole lot clearer. The book of Matthew Yahoo, four and sixteen. Um, more if you can get that for it. The book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. 16. Because remember, all the steam is given to the Father. All of it. Nothing can exist outside of the Father. Not even the Mashiach. Yeah, Matthew 4, 16. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. The people which sat in darkness mm -hmm. saw great light. Again. So we have Matthew now, the writers of Matthew quoting 
Isaiah. Yes. Because there was no New Testament at that time. So if anybody is to speak, they must speak according to Torah. If it's not in Torah, I, I'm not, I don't know what you're talking about. You would have to show it in Torah. So Matthew 4, 16 again, um, Moray, please. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. Mm -hmm. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Light has sprung up. So where did this light come from? It came from Yahuwah, uh, Yahuwah. Right, the light comes from the Father of uh, Yahuwah. From the beginning. Huh? Right, from the beginning, actually. So it's always about um, the fathers, all right? So this light that shone in the darkness, this light has sprung up. This light is actually coming from that, that, that messenger gene or that DNA that sits out in RNA. So we're talking about, um, we, and when we begin to talk about again genetics, because I like the whole thing looking at it from um, genetics. Uh, let me uh, sure. uh, interject here more. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind, Mashiach said something very important. He said, I come to do the will of he who has sent me. Right. He's the light, but the light was sent by someone. Exactly. Remember when the last lesson that said everything is about the Father? But somebody is acting on behalf of the Father. Moray wrote out a very important word. A word will is the Hebrew word nadar. It means not just will. If we have to give a fuller definition, we're talking about the complete will of Yahuwah. And the complete will of Yahuwah takes, the Hebrew word is, uh, Zabak. It's going to take a sacrifice. And everybody here understands to walk this walk is going to take a sacrifice. Right? Um, the only place that I know where you don't have to make a, a, a sacrifice, and this is not a stab, okay, because we don't do personal attacks. The only place that I know where you don't have to make uh, many sacrifices. Is the, uh, is the church. Come as you are. It doesn't matter. The Father knows my heart and everything is okay. Don't judge me by what I do, but judge me from the inside. But I don't understand that because out of the heart, come, out of the mouth comes the issues of, oh, of the heart. So I, I don't quite get that. So, um, but again, Maury put out a very important word, the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is nadar. And the English word is will. And so the word nadar in Hebrew means a complete will of Yahuwah, which is the Hebrew word um, sacrifice. Is it, excuse me, the English word sacrifice, the Hebrew word zavah. And we know that the Mashiach was actually that ultimate sacrifice giving his life. Oh, yeah. So in order to walk this walk, you're going to have to Nah, you're going to have to give your life. <laughs> let's, 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 let's not hold those punches. You're going to have to give your life. Everybody's going to, it's going to come a point where everybody's going to have to make that ultimate sacrifice. So you're going to have to give your life for this here. The way that Moray had brought out last week, when Abraham was willing to um, give up his son's life, all right, for that, to be that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yashiro, which is a prophetic shadow picture of the Mashiach in the nation of Israel. Okay. So we stopped at verse Matthew 4, 16. Okay, okay, excuse me. You want to read it again? Yes, please. Yes. Matthew Yahoo, Matthew 4, chapter 4, verse 16. The people sat in darkness, saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region of shadow of death, light is sprung up. Right. Right, hallelujah. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Verse 6 says, There was a man sent from, they have, we're going to read it the way that it has here. There was a man sent from God, whose name was Yehuchanan or John. Um, who was this man? In verse 6, it said, There was a man sent from God, all right, a 
we talked about that word God was not the proper uh, word that, we sh that should be used. So who was this man that sent Yehuchanan or John in verse 6? Who sent John? Oh, there we go. Yahuwah. It was Yahuwah who sent Yahuwah John. Verse 6. Uh, John 1 and 6. 1 and 6. There was a man sent from Yahuwah whose name was John. He came for a testimony. And he is who here? He came to a testimony. Is she up? Yes. Okay. He came for a testimony. What do you have, Rob? I came. Verse 6. There was a man sent from Yehoah, whose name was John. He came for a testimony. He was John, right? John. Right, exactly. Is that it's John? So John came for testimony to bear witness concerning the light. And who is the light? Hallelujah. We on board now. We on board. Hallelujah. He, John, was not himself the Mashiach or the light, but John came to bear witness concerning the Mashiach. All right? So. Let's prove that this light, L-I-G-H-T, a Koti Shashana brought out something real um, interesting. She talked about the darkness being Hashatan. We're going to prove her right also. So that word light, L-I-G-H-T, is a Hebrew word, um, or, or, or uh, that's, is that an olive? Allah and who in a rush? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's Allah, the who in a rush? Yeah, Allah, who in Right, we're only pronouncing these two letters here because we have this, this, this would be a vowel and this would be a vowel. So we're actually only pronouncing this here. So the word like is actually this, this, this four. All right, so let's look into that and make sure everything is correct. Because we need to identify who is this light in verse 8. Very sheet, the first chapter. Very sheet. Genesis 1 and 1. No, actually, we don't want to do 1 and 1. You're going to try to identify this light here. It says, what do we have here? Um, I'm going to read 1, 2, and 3. It says, in the beginning, which the Rishi Elohim created the heavens and the earth. The heavens is plural. And the earth was without form. And there, and void, without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and that word, we go back to that a little bit later, upon the face of the deep, and the rock of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters, and Elohim said, let there be light. So if we had to identify what's going on here, who or what is that light in Genesis 1, 1 and 4? Right, exactly, so that would be the Mashiach. Because we have something that's happening here. We have uh, the words void 
in darkness. So we have the word void, we have tohu and bohu. Void and darkness. Darkness also represents confusion and chaos. And the Father said, let there be light. This light was the Mashiach. So in this state of confusion, the Father brings the Mashiach to bring order. Because remember, at this point now here, the earth is now in the state of Tohu and Bohu. This is void and darkness. Actually, the people work with darkness is um, a shock. Right. Void and darkness. And so the Mashiach, okay, he comes and he brings order. And the Father saw the light, and the light was told. It was good. Because the light brings order. The light is the Mashiach. The Mashiach is the light of the world. Okay, so this light is, is, is good. It brings back order. During the time of the Mashiach's ministry, the earth was in chaos. Right? It was in chaos. Light has sprung up to bring order back into the earth. We're waiting for the second return of the Mashiach to bring back righteousness or order back into the earth. That's what the Mashiach does. The Father sends the message. The Father is the, um, he, he is the, uh, he's the Father. He's the DNA. He sends out the messenger who speaks on his behalf, and he brings back order and, and um, righteousness back into the earth. We are told, right? And good. Hallelujah. Great. Now, let's go back to the book of Luke. No, excuse me, John. Book of John. Book of John. This class is not personal, but but it's the truth. Let's let's put it that way. He was not himself the light. Yehokanah was not the light. Was not himself the light, but to bear witness of the Mashiach. This true light, this true light was that which enlightened every man who cometh into the world. Now, this is my question. Does every man mean every man that comes through the womb, or does it mean a certain group of people? I'm going to read verse um, 9 again. The true light was that which enlightened every man who cometh into the world. Again, the question is, does every man mean every man that comes through the womb, or does it mean a certain group of people? A certain group of people. A certain group of people. Hallelujah. Um, verse 10. He was in the world. Who is the he? The Mashiach. Right. The Mashiach was in the world. What? Becomes confusing, and we're going to show this without going through a whole lot of scriptures. It's like a no brainer. It's going to be very, very easy. Okay? We don't need a, um, a high school diploma or anything. This is going to be real easy. The true light that was, verse 9, the true light was that which enlightened every man who cometh into the world. He said that this is talking about a certain group of people. He was in the world. Did the, did the Mashiach show himself to the whole wide world? No. He didn't, right? Because verse 10 should complement verse 9. He was in the world, and the world was by his hand, and the world did not know him. Who was it that did not know? The nation of Yahshua. Right, because you have read in um, the book of Isaiah, what, what's it, 9 and, you have read in 9 and 2, in Matthew, Matthew 4, 16, that this was actually talking about the nation of Israel, light has sprung up for them. 
He was in the world, and the world was by his hand, and the world did not know him. We did not recognize the coming of the Mashiach. And then verse 11 complements verse 10. He came to his own. That word own is is that two ends or one end? One. One. Yeah, one. So he came to his own. If he came to his own, that makes it personal. Right. He did not come for every single body. He came for his own. Like you have your own car, you have your own clothing, your own uh, car, you have your your own. Redemption came to the people that were in bondage. The people that were in bondage were Israelites. The Father sent the light because at this particular time, just like in Genesis now, there was darkness and during the time of the Mashiach's coming, the first time the world was in darkness. The light has sprung up, but the people that sat in darkness didn't recognize the light. Okay? All right. We, we, we knock the home runs now. But such as received him. Did everybody receive the Mashiach? No. But such as received him, to him, to them gave he the, um, it has prerogative to be the children of the Father, to them that believe on his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the pleasure of the flesh, nor of the pleasure of man, but of your Lord. Verse 13. Uh, Thirteen, I want to attack. Oh, right now. Uh, what is the most important word in verse 13? Born. I'm going to read from the Septuagint here. These not from blood, nor from the will of the flesh, nor from the will of man, but from Yahuwah, for Elo are born. The, the word that we want to look at here, um, what, what do you say, Zakane? I said, yeah. Right, hallelujah, that's it. That's it. That's the key word that we want to look at. The word born. And the word born should actually be, once the Mashiach comes, it's no longer born, but Reborn. Right. right. Where it is reborn. So, let's prove that. Let's go to, um, so I can't, let's, let's get that then. Let's go to the book of John, the third chapter. Wow, I didn't even get into um, First Kings. Uh, first, no, excuse me, not first, but go to John. You're just going to go to, go to John. The third chapter. One second, so I can't. Rob, so I can't. Excuse me. The third chapter. We're going to look at this word right here. The difference between born and reborn. Uh, one through seven, so I can't. Rob, so I can't. John 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Yahudim. Right. The same came to Yahusha by night and said unto him, Rabbi, mm -hmm. we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, mm -hmm. for no man can do these miracles that you do it, except Elohim be with him. Right. Yahushua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again. Right, born again. So if something is to be born again, we're talking about renewing. Okay, we all must be renewed. You know what? Except a man be born again or renewed again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. So in order to see the kingdom of Yahuwah now, we have to be reborn, renewed. Now, Moray, if you can read 
John, the first chapter, what was it, verse 13. One thirteen. You open out of John, the first chapter, verse 13. Which were born, not of blood. Okay, so we have something here now. We have a group of people, which we are, we were born of blood, right? The dawn. The people that are born of blood, they're carnal. Okay, because they were born of the blood. What we're looking to do now is to be renewed, born in the blood of the precious blood of Mashiach, which is different from, if we had to put it in layman's terms, the way um, we reproduce, the way that we were renewed was through a batula, a alma, a virgin. So we were born in purity. We, it wasn't the act of, wow, she looked good. I can't wait to have relations with her. Okay, that's the act of lust. But lust, it, lust can be in a, in a righteous way, the way that a man desires his wife, his isha. So there's nothing wrong with desiring your woman. But what we're trying to show you now is that John and Mary did not have, Joseph, see, Joseph and Mary did not have intercourse where he desired her. This type of reborn of birth now is through the will of the, this is the Father's doing. Nothing about your, your desires. We all good here? Right. Okay, great. So we talked about the right of the blood, the blood of the Shiach. So go ahead with, um, with yours, I can Rob's I can we're at um, John 3 and 4. Okay. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Right. How can a man be reborn, okay, when he is old? Uh huh. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Which is no. No. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Yahusha answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, the Mayim, the water, and of the spirit, the Ruach, Ruach mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. So we see now how the difference between the coming into the world with an Alma versus a regular man and woman coming together. This coming together is through the Father's with the Nadar. Read on. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Right. And that which is born of the Ruach is Ruach. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Right. You must be born again. And the, Hebrew word, the reason why we know that it is reborn, because we see the word again. Right. You can't go into your mother's womb again. Alright, so we're talking about being reborn, not the act of the way the mother, the mother and the father come together, not like that. The reborn here, we're talking about uh, the Mayim, and like um, Zakeen, that, uh, Rob Zakeen has said now, it's through the, uh, the Ruach. That's what we're talking about here. Making sure, again, that we're looking at the scriptures properly from a um, Hebraic perspective here. Okay. I'm not going to be able to get to it without touch on it a little bit. Uh, let's go to back to the book of John. The book of John. Uh, the first chapter, verse 14. And the word. The word would be what? Right, the word would be the Mashiach, the word would also be Torah. So the Torah, the word became flesh, and it tabernacled, Sukkot, with us. The word us is, um, is personal. 
and we saw who his esteem, who is the his here? His esteem, who's the his? The whole of the Father. Right. And we saw his esteem, so the Father's esteem is, it has the word glory, but the word, because we know that's a, um, a uh, Babylonian deity, so this is why we use the word esteem. esteem. So who is the esteem of Jehovah? He's like one Excuse me? Like yes. Um, John, excuse me, John, the first chapter, verse 14 is where we're at. And the, uh, who is the esteem of Yahuwah? Moshiach. Right, Moshiach. Moshiach. And we saw the fathers, Moshiach, um, a Mashiach as the only begotten. We know that the word um, only begotten is the word um, Vicarin, the court, right? Vicarin, the court. That's the word for first fruits from the Father, which was full of grace and truth. I'm going to read down. That's, that's about it. John testified of him and cried and said, This is he who whom I said that cometh after me and is, and is before me, for he was prior to me. So we know that the Mashiach actually um, existed from the very beginning. Now, with that being said, we have about, what, eight minutes? Okay, question. Why do you read scripture? Any of the sisters I, I, I would like to hear from. Why do you read scripture? Hallelujah. Um, Coach, you said to be in line with Fathers, the fathers will. Any, anybody else? Everybody agree? Okay. Right. Exactly. The answer is perfectly correct. Um, to have an intimate relationship with the Father, John the fifteenth chapter. John the fifteenth chapter. We're looking to have this intimate relationship with. Father. Now, I'm going to ask. Fifteen, I'm going to start at verse seven. I'm going to do this kind of quick. Seven to sixteen, I'm going to read. But if you abide in me, um, what are we? What are we to gather from that? If we, if you abide in me, if, in a, if you, if we abide in who? There are a couple of different answers. Okay, verse seven. But if you shall abide in me, who is uh, and you should? Who, who is the me that we should be abiding in? Right. Exactly. Is Yahuwah. Okay, remember, uh, this is all about the Father here. Yes. Watch how this plant this goes out. But if you should abide in the Father, and my ins my instruction, the word for instructions is what? Is Torah. If we know that the Father and the Son are Akai. So, what the Mashiach is actually saying now is that. He wants us to abide in Him, but He's in the Father. So you're actually abiding in the Father. You can't have a relationship with the Father except you go through the Mashiach. There's a mediator. Okay, remember what I just said. This is, uh, this, and this is the Father esteem. Excuse me, but if you will abide in me, and my structure shall abide in you, whatever you should be, should, should be pleased to ask, it will be given to you. And this is the Father glorified. So again, when we look at it from this perspective now, we're looking at order. There has to be order in every single thing that we do. If it's not order, it's disorder. All right? Um, okay. I'm going to read all of this, and then I'll, I'll talk about it, and we'll pick it up again next week. And this is the Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and you shall be my disciples. 
As the Father hath loved me, the Mashiach, I also have loved you. Abide you in the love of me. If you shall keep my commandments, you shall abide in the love of me, as I have kept the commands of my Father, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13 is very powerful, because I'm talking about laying down lives here. Mm -hmm. There is no greater love than this. Again, there is no greater love than this. Again, the third time. There is no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends. If you do all that I command you, I no longer call you servants, because a servant knoweth not what his master doeth. But I have called you my friends, because I have heard, because what I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So this is the intimate relationship that the father is trying to have with each and every one of us. I no longer call you a servant. I now call you friends. And everything that the father has showed me, I have showed you. All right, and I've shown you. Verse, what am I, 13? 16? It is not that you chose me, okay, but I have chosen you. And uh, Moray, now the Yahoo said that when the Father or the Mashiach found us, he said we was a hot mess, mm -hmm. all right? So it is not that you chose me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed you that you should go in your fruits and that your fruit shall continue as that whatever you may ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to you. These, these things I command you, that you shall love one another. Now, we see now, where are we at, about two minutes, three minutes? Now, Mr. Clark, this is going to be very important. And we all big grown people here, so nobody's feelings is going to be hurt. Because this is all Torah. If I'm wrong, the first person that should check me is Moray, and we have Rob Zikane, and we have Zikane, and we have our offices here, all right? Watch this. The Father is the creator of all things. Nothing can exist outside of the Father. Then we have the instructions that the Father gave us. If you don't follow the instructions, then you're out of order. Okay, you're out of order. The instructions was the Torah, the, uh, the word manifested itself, and we have Yahusha, the Mashiach, as that mediator. We men, we cannot have a relationship with the Father without the Mashiach. To jump over the Mashiach and say that I want to have a personal relationship with the Father is out of order. You can't do that. No way, no where, no how. Now, all of my prayers is in the name of the Father, but the Mashiach is the mediator here. The Isha, she cannot jump over her each over the Mashiach and go directly to the Father and make her prayers. She can't do it. I can't do it. This is the chain of command. The Father, the, the Son, the Man, the each, and the fruit are the children. The A on the each. Oh, each up. Right? So, when your Isha is praying, she has to be under the border in the covering of her Ish. Of her Ish. The Ish has to be following Torah because Scripture tells us, I think in the book of Ephesians, is that. Wives be in, um, in subjection to your each as unto Yahuwah, but 
we know now is that in order to get to Yahuwah, you have to go to Yahusha. Because I heard that there was a particular person that said, listen, I have a personal relationship. Now, this particular person has a covering that she has a personal relationship with the Father. So she skipped her niche, skipped the Mashiach, 